Hey guys, Paul Lynn here, talking to you today about PLC. And whenever people are first getting into PLC and they're maybe studying engineering or they're working in something kind of tangent to PLC, like maintenance or doing electrical work, they see PLCs, they sniff it, they're like, ooh, what is that that's good? I bet there's money in that. I should learn PLC. And then they, they want to get started. They buy a course off of me or something like that. And as soon as they look and they see that there's kind of a, an uphill climb to learn this thing, they start second guessing themselves and thinking, do I really want to invest the next few weeks of my life into learning this stuff? I mean, this looks kind of weird. This looks strange. I've, I've never dealt with anything quite like PLC programming before. Isn't this something that's about to go away? Isn't this kind of dated technology? Isn't this probably about to be replaced by something else? And they get a little scared because, you know, it makes sense. You don't want to waste your time learning something that's not going to be here five years from now or even two years from now. And I always have to hold their hands and reassure them and pet their hair, those that have it, and you don't have to worry because this and that. Let me explain to you. In the world of industrial automation, specifically talking about the heart of that automation, which is the famous PLC, Innovation is very slow. Change happens, but not very often. Now, when you think about it, you're like, man, what about Moore's Law and smaller transistors? And, you know, there's this constant innovation. Every year I get two new phones, you know, one every six months because things are happening so fast and there's new silicone and better displays and it sounds good. And likewise, when you're talking about computers, that laptop that you just bought today, which is the hottest thing out and all the kids are like, oh, that's awesome. Five years from now, everyone's going to be like, whoa, that thing's a turd. Can you even play an MP3 on that thing, right? Things change, things evolve. Things get faster and smaller and more energy efficient and displays get brighter, sounds get clearer. Everything is great. But when we go back to the factory and dig into the machine, that PLC just kind of stays the same year after year after year. The language doesn't evolve. The processor doesn't advance. When you look at the specs of one of those, you know, multi-thousand dollar PLCs, you're looking at the specs and you're like, shit, dude, I've got a solar powered calculator at home that's got better specs than this $3,000 PLC. What the hell are you trying to push off on me? <laughs> right? I mean, most of us have watches that have better specs than a high-end PLC. Our phones, you know, forget about it. I mean, this phone has more computing power, storage space, memory, and everything else than probably a hundred high-end PLCs. So, what the hell, right? Why aren't PLCs evolving? And here's the explanation, here's the answer. The PLC is not a prestige item like an iPhone is to white people in a country club, right? I mean, if you're white in the United States and you try to walk into the country club and you've got a Samsung phone sticking halfway out of your pocket, I don't even think they'll let you in the door. You know, you're not one of the cool kids unless you've got an apple tattooed on everything that you own, right? Um, PLCs don't give anyone prestige. What? In your factory, you're using 
Fanuc PLCs? <laughs> we only use Alan Bradley. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't exist. Now, when you talk about like younger engineers in particular, you know, some of those guys will, will kind of try to bring some of that spirit of brand loyalty into the field, you know? Oh, I'm a fan of Siemens. Why, why are you a big fan of Siemens? Because that was the first thing I learned how to program, and that's what I'm the most comfortable with, and therefore I think it's the best. Great. You know, and you talk about this other guy, oh no, it's Alan Bradley. It's way better than Siemens because this and that and this and that. Oh, really? It's that much better, huh? Wow, well, that's great. The fact of the matter is, any brand of PLCs has its pros, has its cons, and in the end, can probably run the hell out of a machine for years and years and years, pretty much trouble free. So there really isn't all of this pressure, maybe on, again, younger engineers who are trying to be like fanboys or something like they are of their cell phones and music groups, right? Um, but for the people who make these decisions and approve these purchases and things like that, you talk about your factory ownership, the people who, you know, it's their money that buys these PLCs, right? You know what? Someone comes at the door selling a new control system and it's just like, nope, sorry, I've already got the old one on stock in case something breaks. My techs already know how to troubleshoot and work on those. Uh, my programmers already are real comfortable with the software. They know how to you know, use it. And these PLCs and controls are already installed across our entire plant and they work great. Now, here you come selling me something new. Please, tell me what you're going to add to the equation. My machines are running. My operation is sustainable. And I'm making money. Now, you're the PLC salesman selling me a different PLC or a newer, more modern instrument to put into my... Sell it to me. Think about this in your head. What are you going to tell me, the guy who signs the check, what are you going to tell me that's going to make me buy your PLC? If I buy your PLC, I already have like 98% uptime and you know, of my downtime, you know, probably a fraction of a percent is on account of the PLC. So what are you going to tell me? That my machines are going to run better with your controls? My controls already have the machines running great. Are your controls going to improve on great? Not really. Are, are your PLCs going to be cheaper than the ones I'm already using? Well, probably not if they're more modern and more innovative, right? They're probably going to have a lot of research and development costs tacked on to the price. So if I'm getting a newer, better, bigger PLC, it's probably going to cost more money. So it's going to cost me more and it's not going to make me any more. Why would I buy that? And then, you know, you say, oh, but these are very similar to your old PLCs. If they're so similar, how are they better? <laughs> well, it's got a more advanced language. You know, maybe you've got a new PLC that uses a totally different PLC programming language. My programmers already know how to do you know, how to do their job with the PLCs I've got. So you're telling me your new PLC is going to require me to send these guys for training or hire some other guys to help do that? That's, that's going to cost me money. That's not going to make me money. I'm in business to make money, not to waste money. So again, how are you going to sell me this newer, better PLC? Well, it's got more memory and it's got more, you know, RAM in it, and it can, you know, cycle faster than your old one, and it has a newer processor. Okay, all of that may be true. How is it going to make me money? 
If I yank all my controls out of my machines and put all of those controls in and pay for all the programming costs and everything, how is your PLC going to make me more profitable? You see the problem here. You can't sell me a replacement unless it's going to make me more profitable. And a newer, better PLC is only going to make me less profitable. I'm going to waste money changing PLCs. I'm going to waste money liquidating my existing stock and inventory of PLCs. I'm going to have to retrain or hire new talent. I'm stepping into all of this uncertainty. You know, the PLCs I've got, I know what their reliability is. I know how well they work. The stuff that you're bringing me, I mean, sure, it works nice on a floor demo, but when I throw it in a machine and it runs 24 hours a day in a hot, humid environment for five years, then how is it going to perform? You don't know that answer, and I don't know that answer, and I'm taking a risk by giving you all this money for this unknown PLC that I can stick in my machines and hope for the best. I'd be a fool to take you up on a newer PLC. You see the problem here, there is a resistance to change which is inherent to automation. And the reason that resistance is there is a PLC is supposed to be a very simple kind of dumb device with almost no moving parts right? No bells, no whistles, everything very simple. Because the more complexity you add to the device, the more probability it has of failing. The more parts it has, the more parts it has that can break. And I don't want broken PLCs in my machines shutting down my production lines and costing me money, right? So, let me ask you the question that I get asked all the time. Do you think that the PLC is going to be replaced within the next 10 years? Are we going to put a bigger, faster, better, more complicated machine with more advanced software and online updates and all of this stuff? Is that what we're going to put in our production lines tomorrow? or 10 years from now? Are we going to run the risk that like today, Bill Gates can just decide to hit a button and shut down our production lines because he decides to force an update on us because now our PLCs are running Windows or something like that? And don't even get me started on Linux. I mean, that, that's just dumb. But think about it. 10 years from now, I, I'm not saying things won't change. I'm not saying that innovation is not going to happen. I'm just saying that right now we have a very simple device that everybody knows how to program and use and it's highly, highly reliable. Innovation might come within the next 10 years, but I don't see that innovation on the horizon today. I don't see that device or that new control system on the market that I can you know understand and say, oh yeah, that's going to be a threat to PLCs. You wait and see. That can do the job better and it's more reliable and it's more efficient or anything like that. As of today, that device, I've never seen it. Okay? So when you're worrying about, you know, well, is it worth learning PLC program today? Yes, it is. And when you're asking yourself, you know, I see updates to the software, but in reality, nothing ever changes. I see firmware revisions occasionally, but in reality, nothing ever changes. It all seems to look the same. I stepped away from automation for 20 years, and then I came back to it, and what the hell? Everything's still 90% the same. Yes, it is, <laughs> because it works, and there's a lot of inherent resistance in this industry to change for the sake of change. 
if you want to innovate in this industry, that's great. But you're going to have to have a reason and a justification for that innovation. Otherwise, people will not accept it. They will not adopt it. They will not invest in it. We only want something that's going to make the car go faster. We only want something that's going to cost us less money and be more reliable. And when you think about how technological innovation works, most of the time things perform better, but they're less reliable and they cost more money and they don't last as long. They have a much shorter shelf life the more advanced things become. And when you're talking about industrial controls, that's exactly bass backwards. We want the total opposite of that. Hope that makes sense. Hope that answers your questions. Hope now you understand why PLCs are not going to disappear anytime real soon. And yes, it's definitely still worth getting into PLC programming. Hey, that's it. That's what I got for you today. Hope you like it. If you do like it, hey, do me a favor, click the like button. Do somebody else a favor clicking that like button. It'll help them find these videos. Also, subscribe. This is good. If you look at the other stuff I've already got done in my channel, it's good too. And the stuff I'm going to be doing in the future will be good. So subscribe so you don't miss that. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. I'll be seeing you.